So this video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to make an umbrella and we're going to do it in Cinema 4D R14. Now the reason I want to do this is because I want to show you some of the new main features and that's the sculpting tools. It's not going to be a huge in-depth tutorial on sculpting but it's going to introduce you to the workflow, show you how some of the new features work and it's also going to show you just a couple of tricks that will work in R13 and R12. So let's get started and add a disc to the scene. Just while I do this, you're probably noticing that the menus look a bit different and the layout maybe looks a bit different to what you're used to. I've set this layout up with the sculpting tools here just in this video size layout that I'm using. I will include it if you want to follow along. OK, so we've got the disc. I'm just going to click on the disc so I can see its attributes in the manager. And I'm going to change the rotational segments from 36 to 8. So this is basically representing an umbrella with eight spokes. And we're going to work on this while it's flat and then we'll add the arch to it afterwards. And that's something that you can do in previous versions of Cinema 4D, not just in R14 like we're looking at here. Okay, so I'm going to make this into an editable object. And with the disk selected, you can see that I've now got this new button here. I'm going to click that button. And what it does is this is starting to divide ready for sculpting the, the actual geometry we've got under here. Now this isn't the same as putting in a hypernerbs and is not the same as right clicking and choosing subdivide. This is a very special one that makes this tag. So let's make sure we're in object mode. Let's divide this a couple of times. You can see what's happening here. It's just starting to smooth out some of these areas. It's giving us a much denser polygon structure here. And this means that we can start adding in lots of our details that we want to use. I'm going to add one more level of detail like so. Now, I'm going to work on just one area. So let's just go back to here. Let's have a look. I'm going to just choose to display my isopalms. And that helps me just sometimes when I'm swapping between modes. You can see we've got a new tag here. This is the sculpting tag because we actually have our normal geometry underneath it. And it's the tag that does everything. So if I was to delete that tag, you would find that the object is still there and it goes back to normal. I'm just going to undo that because I want it. But we've got this button here in the attributes that says show layer manager. And you can just see this is sculpting layers. So this isn't quite the same as the normal layer manager you would see. Let's move that out of the way. That's the normal layer manager just behind my attributes. This is for changing the, the power of what you're sculpting. So I've divided this object a few times. What you can do is and I would recommend doing this, is starting off with the larger structures and then refining the detail as you go. So I'm actually going to take this slider. I'm going to go back to level one of our subdivisions. And I'm going to take the main sculpting brush, and this is the pool brush, which you'll use mostly. Now, I'm using a tablet, which I think is probably the best way, and you can increase and decrease the height of the sculpting tool by middle-clicking and dragging left and right for the size of the brush and middle clicking and dragging up and down to the height of the brush. So that's kind of like the strength. And as I do this, if you look in the attributes manager, you can see the pressure changing go with that. And if I just click and drag to the right, you can see the size changing. So that's just a bit more of an interactive way of doing it. Let's just click and drag on our mesh and see what we've got going on. So I'm just clicking and dragging across and you can see that the pool brush is doing exactly what you'd expect and it's pulling a little bit like the magnet tool would. Unfortunately, that's not what I want to do. I want to actually go the other way and I want to put slight detents down. I want these areas to just sink down a little bit so we have a little bit of tension where the spokes will run and the spokes will run along these edges later on. So what you can do is you can go to push and pull and you can turn on steady stroke, which just means it kind of evens out so I don't end up with wiggly lines. I don't want to have this lifting up. So like I said, that one was lifting up. But if you hold down control, that's going to do exactly what you want, like so. So if we just move our view round, you can see, let's just swipe across there. The same on the next one over. And I'm just using random strokes here just to kind of add a bit of tension. I am going to do, without holding control, I'm just going to raise up those areas. I'm not trying to add the bulge in the middle where the kind of the umbrella is folding over its spokes. 
uh, I'm just trying to add just a little bit of definition to here. Now, I'm just going to raise up that point a bit more as well. I'm only going to work on this area. Um, you know, you'd think you'd find it a bit boring if I went all the way around and just repeated myself eight times. Feel free to pause once you've got the hang of what I'm saying here and move your way around. Once you get back around to this point again, carry on and we'll go to our next layer. So I'm going to take my subdivision layers up to level four, which is going to be my most dense layer. You can see this is smoothed out very slightly. Now what I want to do is I want to reduce my brush really, really quite small. And I'm just going along the spine. And all I'm doing is adding in just a few details. So I've just dropped the selection so you can see what I'm talking about. And this is looking a little bit harsh, and that's okay. Let's go back to our object. I'm going to add another layer of subdivision. So if I bring the sculpting layers back, you can see we've got five now. Like so. I'm going to go back in here. I'm actually going to go quite close in, but from a fairly high up viewpoint. And I'm just going to work my way along the spine. This is just to give just some of that kind of fabric like wrinkles. I'm going to increase my brush size and just paint these across. Now, let's I need to drop the selection to show you what's happening. Now this looks a bit rough and ready, and at the moment that's because it is. If you drop the selection but keep the sculpting tag visible, you can carry on working on this and not get too bothered by what's going on. So I'm going to go in and just refine this just a little bit more, just with a few sunken down areas. And the reason I'm doing this is just to get some bigger folds, those kind of swathes of fabric you get. Now I'm just moving around and I'm moving in and out and rotating my view just to get this kind of looking reasonably natural. Okay, so I'm going to need one more level of detail. So I'm going to just click on the subdivide again. And if I go back to sculpting layers, you can see we've got six. Move that out of the way. And I'm going to do some really small little kind of creases here. Probably smaller than that. Okay, so I'm going to hold down control because I want these to be kind of depressions. And these are still looking a little bit rough and ready, and that's okay. Now, when you're doing this, you probably want to go and look at some references. I've got pictures of umbrellas and an actual bit of kind of nylon fabric not far away from me. Okay, so I'm doing this kind of crisscrossy shape, and then I'm going to just add a little bit of height. In between some of these, so just bring this out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of these other brushes, and let's just have a look at what we've got. So we've got the push pull button, then we've got the the build up button. And what this one does, let's just choose another area so I can just undo what I've done quite quickly. The build up basically adds like a layer of material which is very useful. You can hold control and you can sink down a level as well, uh, which is quite nice. We have the iron or the smooth. And this is the one I want to look at now because this is very useful. I'm going to increase the size. I'm going to reduce the pressure. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just look from a fairly flat on point of view. And I'm just going to run the smooth tool over these areas, like so, and just decrease the amount of harshness that we have. Now it still looks quite harsh, but it's much better than it was. And you'll actually see, if I go back to my push pull and add in just a few more of these little creases, uh, these little zigzaggy lines work quite well for this kind of fabric. Uh, it just shows a bit of tension. Go back to my smooth tool. 
And you can keep going in with different layers of this. Okay, so we've got that now. Now I'm going to go around and repeat this process for each of these sections. So you do the same and then come back to the video once you've done that. Okay, so once you've got that done and you've got each of your segments walked around and sculpted and you've got the detail where you want it, let's go have a look at what this is actually going to mean for our object. So let's select our object and you can see, oh, well, this is a really dense mesh. So bring back your sculpting layers. Let's go back to, say, level one. All of our original mesh is still untouched and you can bring that back. You can bring all of that detail back. But what we need to do is we need to find some way of getting all of this detail into our original mesh. And you can do that by baking everything out. So what we need to do is we need to click on the disk and with the tag selected there so we can get all of our tools visible. And we want to use this bake sculpt objects. I'm going to click on that. You can see we have a list of options. We'll give this a name. So let's call this volley, we'll call this volley 001. We'll do this as PSD layers. That's fine. I'm just going to save a location for this. So I'll just go to my desktop and in my milk folder, I'll just leave that on the top layer. So save. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So I'll go 1024 square is probably about right for this. And a 32 bits per channel is good. Now we need to go to options and we want to make a displacement, which means that we can keep all of that height information with actual geometry. So it'll actually displace the geometry. We'll make a normal map. Great. And um, now optimal mapping. We can turn this on to cubic or angle. And this is the way that the detail is baked into the map. We'll just leave that as off for now. Including top layers, this is the amount of detail that we're taking. So we want that top layer detail. Move that back out of the way. And we can select which one we're going to use using this as well. Now the target object, the low res mesh, will be level zero. That's our very base mesh. And the displacement, RGB, XYZ is fine. You can do intensity and various others as well. Um, that's fine for now. And normal in the object is fine. Now, when you might want to change these is if you're exporting to other applications so sometimes you might want to flip which axis is actually being used for the normal map that doesn't seem to happen so much anymore so you can ignore that and hit the bake button you can see this is making the maps here you will also see what's going on here and this is looking all a bit funky so let's move our bake sculpt out of the way and what we have is two objects we've got our original disk which we were working on which we can actually delete. We don't need that anymore because we've got all of that detail, or very nearly all of that detail, not actually quite all of it. You can see there's a slight bit of pixelation in some of the areas, and that's just because of the level of detail of the map we used. So over here in the, the, the baking option, we use 1024. This would be clearer and cleaner if we'd used a higher resolution. So if we'd gone up to 2048 or something, that might have gone just a little bit smoother. But for this video, I think that's perfect. Now, this still doesn't look like a brolly, it looks like a bit of a pancake, and that's fine. But you might be wondering where this detail is coming from, and it's if because of this new texture map. Now, let's bring back our material palette. It's this one, and you can see we have a new baked material. And inside here, we have the color, which we can set to whatever we want. At the moment, it's just the default gray. We have a normal map, which is what's being created for us by that baking process. And we also have a displacement map, which is also created for us by that process. Now, here we can change how much of this displacement we want to be visible, the same as we could with any other displacement or normal. So we could take this right down if we wanted to, or we could keep it. We can increase the height of the displacement itself. Same in the normal, we can go down and we can blur this maybe if we want to smooth some of it out. We could even just turn it off. You can see that's all disappeared because we only see that detail in the normal channel. We don't see the displacement. So let's go in and just pop a light in so we can see if this is actual geometry that we're looking at or if it's just a uh, material trickery. So let's go to our map and just turn on soft shadows, do a quick render. This is a rendered version of the object with only the displacement on. Adding the normal, 
gives you a slight bit of better definition, but not a huge amount. Uh, but it makes it a lot easier to work in the perspective view. And let's just kill that light. We don't really need that anymore. Now what we want to do is we want to take this disc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode. And in fact, we'll set the rounding up first. So let's go into our deformers here. And we're looking for Spherify. I'm going to make that a child of the disc. Let's back out a little bit. You can see we've already got something a bit weird going on here. And that's because the Spherify is in the wrong place. Let's just bring that down. You can see if we bring it away from our body completely, the body goes flat again. But if we lift that up, you can see this is actually starting to take on a reasonable shape. Now let's just go back to grid shading with lines so you can see the curves a bit easier. Now this is looking pretty good, still not perfect, and that's fine. We could probably do it a bit more definition in some of this sculpting, but you know that's uh, that's not to do with the workflow. That's to do with my brush strokes. Now, if I was doing this for a, a more refined project, then I'd probably spend a lot longer just going in and painting in all these details. But for the purposes of this video, it works fine. And uh, now, if we just now oh, we'll pop another light in there again, actually, because it does help us see what's going on. Let's just have a look at that. Okay, we need to turn on the shadows as well so we can see how it's really working. And this is, you know, it's it's not pretty, but you can see it's doing its job perfectly well. Okay, so I'm going to go into my disk and in edge mode, let's just hide our material palette again and the coordinates just so we've got a bit more room. I'm also going to hide from the editor the Spherify Deformer. I'm going to go in, I'm going to take this edge basically taking all of the edges that form where the spines would be or the spokes or whatever you'd like to call them um, of our umbrella so it's basically these loops here like so and all we're going to do now is we're going to take those and we're going to make those into our spokes so if we go to Ah, edge to spline, that's the one I wanted. So the selected edges are going to be converted into splines, and you can see already those splines are there. And if I drop down, we can see disk spline is a child. Let's get rid of that. Let's just hide our disk for a minute. Now, you can see these aren't actually in the hierarchy anymore uh, with the Spherify deformer, so they're not being affected by that Spherify, but that's okay. Um, I just want to take it out for a minute while I add the profile in. So I'm going to make this profile about a centimetre across. I'm going to add a sweep nerve. I'm going to take the disc spline, put that underneath the circle, and put them both inside the sweep. I think the profile is possibly even a bit too thick at a centimetre, so let's make that 0.5, like so. And we'll put the sweep back in with the disc. Let's just see where everything disappeared to. There's too much going on here and it's confusing the process. Now what we need to do is we need to have all of this in one hierarchy. So I'm just going to group it together into a null. And I want the order to be, I'm going to put the sweep nerves, which is our splines, the child of the disc. So now we have our splines or spines, sorry, uh, is part of the same hierarchy. You can see that they're actually perfectly lined up with our body. Now I'm going to turn off in my material, so I'm just going to turn off the normals a minute just to make it a bit clearer what's going on. I'm going to hide this verify again. I don't need to look at that anymore. And we're looking pretty close. This is actually not far off. But we, one thing we need to do is we need to take the disc is like so and I'm going to add that into if you go to the simulate menu go to cloth cloth nerves hold down the option key make that child of cloth nerves one subdivision is all I need what I'm really looking for here is thickness so I'm going to add a centimeter of thickness now what you can see has happened is actually affected the spokes as well, which we really don't want. That's not good at all. 
Um, so let's undo that right back until just before we put the cloth nerves into the scene. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this, just going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to control click and drag on that null. I'm going to remove the sweet nerves from that top hierarchy. We'll call this one the cloth. I'll remove the disk from the lower of the hierarchies. We'll call this one the spokes. I don't know if that's what they're called on an umbrella, by the way. That's just what I'm calling them. And I can now just drop these below the level of the cloth, but they're still there, like you can see there. But they're not protruding through, which is possibly a very good thing. And that means that I'm free to now go to the disk, which is the volley, go back to my simulate and add the cloth nerves back in. Uh, and this now won't be affecting the, uh, the spokes. So let's just get a view where we can see what's going on here a little bit more clearly. Okay, so cloth nerves, I'm gonna add a bit of thickness, say 0.3. This is cloth after all, we don't want it too, too crazy. And let's just that to pop around there. Okay, so we now have this going on and don't forget I've only hidden the normals from the renderer. If I render the scene you'll still have the, the details going on there. Now this is something you need to watch for. If I just render that again, you'll see that because this is actual displacement happening here, it's moving the geometry, the spokes are actually poking through. So what you need to do is just be sure that your geometry isn't going too far. And if it is like there, we can go into the displacement. We could change this down to, let's try two centimeters, go a bit more than you might think. And that's cleaned that up pretty well. Um, you can then increase it. So I'm just gonna go back up to three and keep increasing this until you get to a point where you're happy. And we can see the details coming back here as well. And uh, let's go to five centimeters. See, it's just starting to poke through at the edges. So let's go back to, say, four and a half. And we're all good to go. So I can close that down. And now I'm pretty free to do whatever I need to. So I'm going to just close these. I'm going to group both those hierarchies into this one, which I'll call Rolly, like so. And I'm going to go into a front view. I'm going to turn on snapping. So I'm just going to hit P, enable snap, and hit P again. I'm just going to click on the dotted bar so I can see a few things. So I'm going to turn on work plane snap and grid point snap, which means it will snap to the grid as I move things around. And shut that down. I'm going to add a linear spline to the scene. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to add my first point right in the middle and up a little bit. See that. This is snapping to the points of the grid as I move around. Let's go to that point there. And that point there. Okay, so I'm going to hit the space bar to drop that tool. I'm going to take both of those points there. I'm going to take this into an arch. So I'm going to right click. Let's go to chamfer. And click and drag to the right until you get this full arch going on. Spacebar to drop the tool. Now I need to add a profile for this handle and it's going to be round, so I'll just add a circle. Let's make this two centimeters, I think it's probably about right. Add a sweep nerves to the scene. Make sure that the circle or the profile is above the spline, which is our path. Drag them under the sweep nerves. Probably a bit thick, so go back to the circle and let's make this one a bit better. Okay, so now with the sweep nerves. We want to look at the details in the attributes manager here and it's sometimes worth giving yourself a bit more room here because this is defining the whole the thickness across the whole length of this object so let's just back out until we can see the entire height so if we imagine that following all the way around the curve is the entire length from here to here 
demonstrate this just by dragging down like so you can see that in our front view you can see that that's thickening and thinning as I drag it and if I do the same at the other end you get a similar look okay so what I want to do is I actually want to add a point to the top of the body so it's got like a pointed tip so I'm going to add by holding control and clicking just there a point my spline and I'm going to drag that handle pretty much till the end like so and I'm just going to take the handle of the spline that I'm using here just drag that down select that point and do the same drag that up now you can see that this kind of comes through a little bit so the point extends further than the brolly itself so I need to give myself a bit more room so I can see what I'm doing um, and I need to take this point again bring that back to about there so I'm happy with that let's just drag everything back again and if we go into a perspective view we've got a pointy tip a nice shaped handle well I do want to add a cap on the end of that so I'm going to go to sweep nerves add a cap and add a fillet cap on the end I'm going to constrain it you can see it's way too big this is actually kind of extended beyond itself so I'm going to give it three steps and I'm going to make this 0.2 probably about right have a look at that yeah that's nice and round but not ridiculously round now it's probably worth putting a bit of a collar around the handle here just to finish things off a bit more nicely so I'm just going to use a cylinder we don't need to make it into a tube go to object let's make this one by one for now back up so we can see it bring that down it's not quite wide enough but that's okay so I'm going to bring it to roughly where I want it probably about there and I'm going to increase the radius to 1.2. I'm going to increase the height to 2 as well, actually, to make that bit nicer color. Okay, so that's looking quite nice. What I do need is I need spokes that join up on the inside that kind of go back the other way. To do that, I'm just going to add another disc and raise that disc up somewhat. Make this into eight rotational segments now because I've got my isoparms turned on you're not seeing all of the details here um, I only want the disc segments to have one kind of from center to edge like so let's just what I'm looking at here is where the points join up the kind of inside frame to the spokes um, I'm also going to need to take that cylinder which is the collar let's rename that to collar I'm going to duplicate it by control clicking and dragging and control clicking and dragging upwards so that the one that lives on the top is above in the hierarchy let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to take this up so it just snaps in to where this disc is now this disc I'm going to hit C to make that editable can see now that what I'm going to do is let's hide the grid so it makes things a bit cleaner I'm going to go back to my mesh commands and I need to select some edges first so just select those edges to mesh commands edge to spline drag that out I don't need the disk anymore so I can get rid of that and this can be inner spokes now I'm going to just open up my brolly so this is the handle let's rename that put that into the brolly I'm going to take my spokes and in the sweep nerves I'm going to take that circle and control click and drag above my inner spokes I'm going to add a new sweep nerves to the scene and add those both to it as children and you can see now that I have the 
kind of the inner workings going on a bit more clearly. And you can see that these are slightly off to one side. Now, that's happened just as a, a result of the Spherify, but actually, you're always going to suggest moving them to one side anyway. For a me medium detailed model like this, um, you don't need to worry about the caps and where they're joining. You could put pins across using little cylinders, but I really don't think you'd ever need to. I don't think you'd get close enough to this model to need to do that. Um, but having them off to one side helps just a little bit. And that's pretty much all we need to do. Let's do a quick render just to see how it looks. The polygon shapes are just a little bit visible, and I think that probably means we need to go into the cloth, just change the fong angle of this. Like so, that makes it a bit better. Um, in fact, what we can also do is we could open up that material uh, and we could increase the displacement just a bit more. Let's go to six and see how that looks. Take it back to 12 and let's just try something. So that looks a bit better, it's a bit smoother, but I think we're going to see a lot coming out the top, which we are. But what we can do is we could actually take our two sweep nerbs. So this is the inners. Let's take all of these bits, just put them in the brolly for now. I'm going to take the spokes and the inners. It's going to drop them down uh, in object mode. Do another render. Still not quite right. Drop them down a tiny fraction more. It's going to turn off my snapping as well because they're trying to snap to things that I don't want them to. This gives me a bit more smoothness of control. And there we go, that's much better. The point of this was more to look at how the workflow works of using the sculpting tools, but this is a good example. And using things like Spherify does make weird objects like this, which is quite a complex shape. An umbrella is actually surprisingly complex for what it is. Makes it a bit simpler because you can work on everything flat and then bend it over afterwards.